Hello everyone, back to you for your Saturday evening update. So we did weekend forecast earlier on today and uh, it's going for a very wet, uh, uh, quite windy uh, week ahead, very unsettled. It. There'll be several bouts of rain heading in across the country. Um, but right at the very end of the forecast, we get through to next weekend, there was the suggestion... No more than that. But there was a suggestion within the uh, GFS run that was using for weekend forecasts that we might try to build high pressure up over Scandinavia again and try and get the winds into uh, the east. Maybe go for a beast for, from the east part too, um, if you like, though it wouldn't be as severe probably as we had earlier in the month. But um, anyway, I said we'd have a look at the midday runs of the models this evening, see what they're showing. So we're just going to have a quick um, run through the GFS, the GEM and the ECMWF, which is just updated as I'm starting the video. Um, and uh, we'll have a look and see what those runs are showing in terms of the chance of getting wind into the east next weekend and probably lasting through to the following week. i just say that today's first video was the verification uh, of the winter 2017-18 forecast. That's now been placed on the winter forecast um, page uh, with a written summary as well. Really happy with how the forecast panned out uh, this time. So have a look at that and uh, see what you think. But uh, now we're going to get on with your uh, Saturday evening update. So we're going to begin with the GFS. This is how it's looking uh, for Wednesday, bringing up this southerly wind, low pressures out to the west southwest bus, um, another way of France piling in both the Atlantic been quite a lot of uh, wet and windy weather in across the country at that point. We go through to uh, Thursday. Again, low pressure is out to the southwest of Ireland, turning windy here uh, with potentially some uh, gale force winds into the southwest and also a lot of heavy rain as well. Notice a bit of a ridge beginning to form over Scandinavia at 1,020 millibars. That forms into an area of high pressure by Friday, up to 1,030 uh, millibars, uh, with low pressure out across the west of Ireland, a battle is starting to take place between the high pressure to the northeast and the low pressure to the southwest. No real changes in terms of the weather for us at this point. It's still pretty wet and uh, windy too. That takes us into next weekend. The orientation of the high pressure is changing, so we're getting closer to pulling in easy winds, although still actually we are under an Atlantic influence away from maybe the very, very far north and uh, northeast of Scotland. There's the upper air temperatures for Saturday. It looks generally quite mild across the UK and Ireland, but you'll notice there's a fairly deep and extensive cold pool sitting over Scandinavia with that uh, Scandinavian high. That's how we go up to Sunday uh, next week, Sunday 18th of March. And uh, the high pressure is dominating now over Scandinavia. We've got a proper easterly wind going uh, across much of northern Europe. We still remain under these areas of uh, low pressure, but they are being pushed back a little bit into the Atlantic by that area of high pressure. But as we run up towards day 10, and we get to day 10, which is Tuesday 20th of March, we start to find this low pressure beginning to slip away to ourselves as the high pressure is beginning to retrogress, which is where we take it um, from east to west, as opposed to the typical zonal flow, which is west to east. We take that high pressure over to Greenland and start to set up a ridge there. Uh, so that starts to push this low pressure south. We are beginning to pull cold air in from the north and the northeast now. And then as it goes a little bit beyond day 10, we do actually go into quite a cold spell as the winds turn into the north and the northeast. Not from the Scandinavian high, but courtesy of the high pressure around Greenland and uh, Iceland. So that's how we go up to uh, Friday the 23rd of March. We do look cold at that point. We're bringing in a, bringing in a proper north northeasterly wind. That could be bringing snow, particularly to northern and eastern parts of the country. So it's not a beast from the east with tonight's GFS, but it does eventually get us into quite a cold setup, and it does it um, via retrogression of the Scandinavian high to Greenland and then pulling down a northerly wind. This is the GEM, the Canadian model. This is the Wednesday. Again, we've got low pressure out to our west. It's wet and windy, essentially, through to the end of the week. Trying to get that ridge building over Scandinavia by Friday, but n making nowhere near as much of it as the uh, GFS is doing. And so, actually, if we go into next weekend, we just have these areas of low pressure continuing to move in from off the Atlantic. There's no real Scandinavian high. And even for northern Europe, by the end of next weekend, so the 18th of March, there's no real easterly wind uh, going on. That's how we look as we get to day 10. And uh, we're still pretty mild at day 10, actually. The high pressure, it does form a little bit over Scandinavia, but it's pretty weak 
our main uh, sort of driver is uh, this high pressure building down to the southwest, which is actually starting to drag up some very mild southwesty winds. So no particularly cold weather on tonight's uh, GM, tonight's Canadian uh, run. And then finally, this is the ECMWF. This again for the middle of uh, next week looks pretty wet and uh, windy with low pressure out to the southwest. Now, this makes even more of a high pressure over Scandinavia compared to uh, the GFS. So, uh, by uh, as early as Friday, actually, we are turning winds into the east across northern and eastern parts of the country. They're not particularly cold easterly winds, um, but you want to have a chill to them as this low pressure is slipping down to the southwest of Ireland. So, there's differences between the models from as early as around Thursday and uh, Friday here. Uh, that's how things look on Saturday when we are pulling in an easterly uh, wind, actually, from this area of high pressure that's across southern Scandinavia at uh, this point. There's the upper air temperature, so not a particularly cold easy. It would have a chill to it. Um, you see that the cold air, the really cold air, is across many northern, eastern, and northeastern parts of Europe. And if we were to maintain that easterly wind for another day or so, I suspect we would start to drag that back into the west of Europe once again. Uh, heading up towards day 10, we start to get that ridge building over Greenland and Iceland. So there is a bit of um, agreement there between the GFS and the ECM. Uh, again, most of the cold air is being placed, or the coldest of the air, is being placed to our northeast. That's how the upper air temperatures look on Monday the 9th of the uh, chart. I mean, that's how it looks on um, Monday the 19th of March. So if I show you the upper air temperatures with that, you can see that, again, most of the coldest of the air is across Scandinavia and to the northeast. But we do bring some of that cold air down into particularly the northern part uh, of the British Isles. And then as we go up towards, uh, go, go to day 10, we find the high pressure is dominating to the north of Scotland. And uh, that is starting to pull in quite a cold easterly wind then at uh, that point. So the GCM takes quite a while to get there. But uh, by day 10, we are actually bringing in some quite cold air from the east. I suspect there would be snow showers starting to move in uh, from the east as well. That looks pretty cold and winter, I have to say, the um, east every year tonight. But GFS is somewhere in between, but it does eventually get cold just a little bit beyond day 10. And the GEM isn't really interested in it at all. So it's all rather inconclusive. I don't think we'll be unleashing a beast from the east because uh, at this stage, anyway, it doesn't look as though the very coldest of the air across northeastern Europe is going to get dragged into the west of Europe. But we do need to keep an eye I think, on this, because the um, the things that cause the beast from the east, that cause that Scandinavian high at the uh, end of February, particularly in relation to the sudden stratospheric warming and then the subsequent blocking, um, those things are still at work within the atmosphere. So whilst we have seen uh, beasts from the east go away, we've turned a lot milder, it doesn't preclude the chance that we might get some cold air coming back again at any point within the next few weeks. And certainly the models, um, they don't bring the cold as we had it, but they are definitely, particularly the GFS and the ECM, they are flirting with the idea definitely of bringing some quite potent cold weather close to us um, within around uh, a week to 10 days. So just got to keep a close eye on where uh, this is going to go. But it isn't too late to get some very cold and wintry weather, that's for sure. We know from 2013, but even into April, we can have it really quite cold and uh, wintry. So it's a case of watch this space. It might not go into anything. It could be that GEM is, uh, has got this right and we'll never get this cold weather going uh, again. But uh, let's just see what happens over the next day or two. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have some uh, summer analogues for you. And uh, also, we'll have a gas of his Sunday roundup, as always. So come back for all of the updates tomorrow. But uh, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.